Joining us now is Laura Martin, senior internet and media analyst at Needham. Laura, uh, good to catch up with you on this. Now, it, it's interesting how, how Disney shares did trade a little bit lower and underperform the group in response to this news. I suppose it's because someone's always disappointed with the outcome of a vote. And if you were voting uh, for the company slate, you already own the stock. But what's your read on what's next in terms of uh, the company priorities? If they're just, if it is it kind of more of the same or is there something else to expect? Yeah, I think there was hope. You know, he got the, um, he got 31 percent of the vote. Like, you know, I'm surprised Nelson Peltz got, did that well. So I think what that means is they thought Mel, Nelson Peltz would be more short-term oriented and the people that were sort of buying the stock because they thought he would drive better succession planning and more short-termism is now not going to be on the board for at least another year. And I think what they have to do next is they have to fix the streaming losses, They've got to start up this ESPN joint venture with Warner Brothers and Fox. They've got to drive growth, figure out a way to drive growth at ESPN. Um, and they got to fix the theme parks because we've got this whole sort of political, we're in a political year. And as you know, Disney falls on the wrong side of the woke quotient. And that is hurting their attendance, in my opinion, in Orlando. So we it is, because I, I was going to say, what has to be fixed at the theme parks, considering it doesn't seem as if, you know, they've raised some prices again, and it doesn't seem as if visitation is necessarily uh, struggling at this point. So I think visitation's fine in California, and it's really strong offshore in Shanghai and Hong Kong and Paris. I think in Orlando, um, they are raising price. You're exactly right. But uh, I also think there's sort of a backlash, not only from sort of the political spectrum, but also because prices have got sort of egregious in, in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not surprised uh, to hear that. I, I guess, you know, the company has already said what they, they have. The cost cuts are in train. In fact, they pulled some of them forward uh, that they're going to have free cash flow this fiscal year. I guess they're saying comparable to the, the pre-COVID peak. Um, all the things you mentioned they have to do, it seems like that's central to their to their plan right now. And I guess the stock has maybe reflected a lot of that, given the fact it's vastly outperformed other legacy media uh, at this point. And it trades above, by the way, where Nelson Pelt sold it over a year ago. Well, not only that, like he spent, and Nelson Pelt spent $25 million waging a proxy contest that he lost because all 12 seats are going to Disney. But he made a billion dollars on his $3.5 yeah. billion investment by driving decision making so that. Bob Iger could keep the board the way he wanted it. So he made a billion dollars by spending $25 million fighting with Disney. To me, that's exactly the kinds of things a billionaire does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's certainly, uh, you know, you can't, you can't really argue if that was uh, really the backup plan was to make a lot of money by making a lot of noise. Uh, I get that. I guess that makes sense. But from here on out, in terms of the risk reward in Disney shares, um, do you see that the uh, ESPN joint streaming venture is going to be a, a mover of the needle at this point? What else is there to, to kind of expect in terms of, you know, giving a signal as to whether the stock can get another leg higher? Right. So catalyst for the stock, definitely the ESPN joint venture. I think there's 10 million cord cutters that are not getting sports right now. So I really like this ESPN joint venture with Warner and Fox as a catalyst for the stock. They've got to get better content in the theaters and on streaming. They have a bunch of sort of every month they now have sort of a tentpole film coming out. That will help the numbers a lot because, as you know, that Disney engine is driven by box office successes, both in the parks and consumer products. So they need some more box office successes because Disney has been sort of um, doing poorly at the box office. So they have to fix that. And they need to still cut costs on the streaming side to get to profitability.